This video was produced by Lion Total Care, dedicated to keeping you safer longer. Chapter 5 Advanced Cleaning and Advanced Inspection of Structural Fire Helmets Advanced cleaning and advanced inspection is essential to firefighter safety and health. Chemicals, smoke deposits, and condensed residues can accumulate on helmets during emergency responses, fire suppression, and overhaul operations. This can result in secondary exposure to cancer-causing chemicals through skin absorption and inhalation. Helmets covered in hydrocarbons tend to absorb heat rather than reflect it, reducing the thermal protection. There are three levels of cleaning, preliminary exposure reduction, advanced cleaning, and specialized cleaning. Preliminary exposure reduction is the light cleaning of helmets by the individual firefighter. Advanced cleaning is the thorough cleaning of helmets by careful washing of each individual part. It must be managed or performed by trained fire department personnel or a verified ISP. The helmet is removed from service during the advanced cleaning process. Decontamination is the removal of hazardous materials or bodily fluid. Contaminated helmets are removed from service until the contaminants or suspected contaminants are identified and elements can receive specialized cleaning to remove the specific contaminants. Helmets contaminated by CBRN and terrorism agents must be retired after confirmed exposure. Do not attempt to clean or decontaminate. Follow local regulations for disposal. NFPA 1851 requires helmets to receive an advanced cleaning every six months, with one advanced cleaning done at the time of their annual advanced inspection. Helmets should also be cleaned immediately if they meet your fire department's definition of soiled. Protect yourself from possible exposure to contaminants when cleaning the helmet or any PPE. Wear gloves and eye protection. To clean your helmet, you'll need a soft bristle brush, soft towels, and a mild detergent such as Lion Station Care. The detergent must have a pH range no less than 6.0 and no greater than 10.5 a common flathead screwdriver. Nut driver and lion headband removal tool may also be needed to remove some components. When performing an advanced cleaning, the manufacturer's cleaning instructions must be followed. Instructions are typically found on the helmet's label and in documentation provided by the manufacturer. If you don't have manufacturer's instructions, use NFPA 1851 guidelines. When performing cleaning and inspection of helmets, be careful not to pull off or damage labels or any other identifying marks. Remove eye protection, chin strap, headband cover, ear neck protector, and leather shield from your helmet. If the helmet's headband and suspension assembly are removable, remove them using either the Lion headband removal tool or a common flathead screwdriver. Fill a utility sink with warm water that does not exceed 105 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 degrees Celsius. Water hotter than this can cause scalding of the hands and may also damage some components of your helmet. Helmets cannot be machine cleaned or dried using equipment that produces mechanical action by tumbling or agitation. Chlorine bleach, chlorinated solvents, active ingredient cleaning agents, or solvents cannot be used without the helmet manufacturer's approval. Measure the cleaning solution according to the manufacturer's instructions and add it to the water. Advanced cleaning includes washing both the inside and outside surfaces of the helmet. It is usually not necessary to completely submerge a helmet for cleaning. Apply the detergent water solution to the outside of the helmet. Gently use a soft bristle brush to clean the outer shell of the helmet, retro-reflective material, and the brim. Also, clean the inside of the helmet using the soft bristle brush. Make sure to scrub between components and in difficult-to-access spaces. Rinse your helmet under running water. Remove excess water with a clean towel, then hang the helmet to dry in a shaded area that receives good cross-ventilation or use fans to recirculate air in the room. Dry all helmet components the same way. To clean the chin strap and other strap type elements, undo all buckles and soak in the detergent water solution, 
Then scrub thoroughly with a soft bristle brush. Eye protection should also be gently washed in the detergent water solution using a soft towel, thoroughly rinse, and hang to dry. To clean the headband and suspension assembly, soak it in the detergent water solution, then wash thoroughly using a soft bristle brush. Rinse off soiling and detergent under running water. Use a clean, dry towel to remove excess water and hang to dry. For best results, wash headband covers and ear and neck protectors in a front-loading washer using the same guidelines previously mentioned for water temperature and cleaning solution pH levels. The headband cover and ear and neck protectors can be machine-dried using the no-heat or air-dry option. Clean the leather shield according to the shield manufacturer's instructions. Once all components are completely dry, reassemble the helmet. Complete your advanced cleaning documentation. The documentation must be kept on file at your department. Before returning the helmet to service, perform an advanced inspection. Soft spots and contamination. If any are present, record it on the inspection form and mark the helmet to be retired from service. Inspect the face shield and goggles for cracks, scratches, charring, distortion, or damage from heat or flames that could limit vision. Mark any damage on the inspection form and designate the face shield or goggles to be replaced. Look for missing, loose, or damaged adjustment knobs. Verify the functionality of the face shield and or goggles. If any items are missing, can't be tightened, or are damaged, noted on the inspection form. Do not return the helmet to service until it has been repaired. Examine the reflective trim for melting, loss of retroreflectivity, fluorescence, and separation from the shell. If the trim is damaged, identify it on the inspection form and designate the helmet for repair. On the inside of the helmet, look for cracks, deterioration, or other damage. Check for torn straps, torn padding, or breaks in the helmet suspension system. Inspect the headband for tears, breaks in the plastic connectors, and broken or loose adjustment ratchet. Make sure the chin strap has no damage and the attachment buckle and adjustments work properly. If any damage or malfunction is detected, document it on the inspection form and do not return the helmet to service until it has been repaired. Find the safety labels, cleaning instructions, and manufacturer's identification labels. They should be legible and securely affixed. Look for separation around the outer edge of the label or curling in the corners. If any are illegible, missing, or loose, note it on the inspection form and contact the manufacturer for instructions. If the advanced inspection results are satisfactory, return the helmet to service. If it needs repair or additional testing, send it either to a verified ISP such as Lion Total Care or the manufacturer. For additional information on the care of structural fire helmets, contact Lion Total Care.